And welcome into Press Box Live. We are brought to you tonight by C3 American Exteriors. Go to their website at c3america.com to get a brand new roof for just the cost of your insurance deductible. And I just want to say an endorsement. I went out to watch these guys work. I like this company. I trust this company. And I think you will too. C3 American Exteriors for the best roofing experience you can have. Joining us tonight, of course, my co-host is Ross Grimsley. And Ross, I'm going to let you introduce a good friend of yours. Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to. This is a an old, uh, well, I'm not going to say old. He's old. A good friend. <laughs> I would never do that. Very but, old. Very guy, old. He Very 14 old. Years, he pitched 14 years in the big leagues. Uh, uh, double figures in nine of those years. Uh, 12 or more wins eight times, 14 or more five times. Uh, Right-handed fireballer, Mike Boddicker. Bod, welcome to our show, buddy. Great having you. It's great to be here. How's my how's my girlfriend, Bird? She, she's doing outstanding. She <laughs> might be sure to pass on uh, you know, a big hug to you. I, you and your family. I, I, still don't know, I still don't know how you got so lucky. No, I know. I don't, I don't get it. He out punted his coverage, they say, in the sports world. <laughs> you know it, man. Yeah. You know it. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike, we thank you for doing this. I said I was going to start you out with a, a sort of a little bit of a trick question. Today was Patriots Day in Fenway Park, where they start the game at 11 o'clock. Lucas Giolito, uh, Chicago White Sox hurler, their number one starter, uh, only let up eight runs in one inning, seven of them earned, gave up a couple home runs. Uh, did you ever start on Patriots Day? And what is it like pitching at 11 o'clock in the morning in a big league game? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I started one game and that was it. I'll never do another one of those Patriot games. Uh, I think I gave up more runs in the one inning than Giolito did. I think I gave up eight and two thirds of an inning and I was out of there. So no, it was, it was bad. I, I bad, bad experience. So that's an no. odd one. That's an odd one. Tony, I don't want to pitch at 11 o'clock in the morning. No, no, no that's never good. Never, never, never. Even, even if you're up, the rest of your teammates are not. So it doesn't really matter. Hey, I don't know how much baseball you've gotten to see yet this year or how much, and I don't know what you thought of Tony La Russa when he was a manager in his prime, but after a 10, 11 year layoff, coming back to manage baseball at the age of 76, seems like a recipe for a bad idea. I thought it was, I really yeah. did. I mean, um, it, it just didn't fit, Yeah, you know? <laughs> Tony was there when we won the, the, the uh, ALC. Yep. Yeah. And then, then he went on to Oakland, but uh, no, it just didn't fit. I know I heard an interview the other day, they'd lost a game and it was a close game and, and they questioned him and he goes, well, yeah, I, I messed up. Well, what did you do, Tony? Oh, you saw the game. That's all yeah, he said. He's, he, well, well, yeah, we saw the game, but what did yeah, you do to mess up? We want to get your opinion on what you yeah, did wrong. Just read yeah, just Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they didn't force the issue, but I think well, I might have. Well, it's an it's an odd situation there in that the owner who fired him thirty years ago in Chicago, Jerry Reinsdorf, likes Tony La Russa, probably regrets having fired him, and wanted to to make amends for having fired him. That's not the right reason to pick him. To Put him in the front office. Baseball team. Yeah. Put him in the front office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, Stan, baseball is really hard to watch anymore. Yeah. Oh. All it is is strikeouts. All it is is home runs. It's all about, you know, uh, spin rates and uh, off the bat velocity. And, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what do you think about this? I said, well, Dave Winfield hit one off my left earlobe when I was young <laughs> and I was pretty good fielder right. and I couldn't get my glove up quick enough and it burnt my earlobe. And I, I, I don't remember the next two innings. And the next time he came up, I told, I can't remember if it was, it was Cruz or, or Wayne Gross. Right. I says, go as deep into left field as you can. And I told Rip, I said, get as far out. I don't care if you play left field. 
<laughs> I'm pitching him in. There's no way he's hitting the ball off my body again. Right, there you go. <laughs> so I didn't know, need to know the, the velocity off the bat right. to you tell me need, the ball was just scalded. Right. You didn't <laughs> need to know the action. Be no, like. don't need that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the, the eye test will t- will will indicate. Okay, that was hit really hard, and if, you know, Ross, the oh, ball no. makes, it makes a special sound when they really square it up. A, a well, really good hitter squares it up. And you know what's really sad is the fact that how hard they hit the ball off of you. Now, neither one of us were fireballers. Maybe at one time. Never, and, not for me. Never fireballers. So you know how much effort and energy oh. putting in to hit it that hard back at us. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, that's all. That's all him. No, that, you got none, it. None you of that's me. It. Now, hey, what, one of the things, one of the questions I, I want to ask you, and uh, you know, I'll, uh, that the fact that obviously, you know, when uh, when you came to Baltimore was uh, right toward the end of my career. Neither one of us were hard throwers. I, I was earlier. I were you a hard thrower at one time when you first Never. came up? Well, not when you came up, but maybe in, no. in college or something. No. Okay. That, that there's my point. Here's a guy, uh, Mike Boddicker, uh, change speeds. You had the uh, uh, the really good breaking ball, the good uh, uh, change up, the Fosh, and you threw from several different angles. Didn't throw hard, uh, but you're a guy that Rod Carew said little league slop. Now, yeah. now, as now we can kind of laugh. I got the same thing for Bill Madlock and some other guys about throwing the. That, you know, I loved it. I loved it <laughs> at, the, at, at the time. But did it ever? Did it ever piss you off that? Uh, how dare you say it? I'm busting nope. my ass. Never. You, you remember Earl's cards? You remember Earl's? Oh cards, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, Ted right. Simmons uh, still can hit a fastball. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's stupid little stuff. Rod Carew, throw it as slow as you possibly can. <laughs> Underline, really? possibly can, mm-hmm. right? So I threw him the slop, biggest slop up there. So when he said that, he, he, he said in the paper, he says, my, my wife takes out better garbage at night than he threw to the plate tonight. <laughs> and he came up and apologized <laughs> the next day. <clears throat> on, yeah. Why? It was the truth. <laughs> and, and I said, and do you realize that, a Hall of Famer just recognized me. I was, yeah. a rookie, you know, <laughs> I was, I was pretty, I was pretty proud of that. Right. Slow, I slow. I did what told me to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I got I, him out. Now, now my other question is uh, when you were doing it, when I was doing it in, uh, you know, Catfish Hunter, here are these guys that you would, you know, you would pitch into the late innings of the ball game, seventh, eighth or ninth inning. That means you, you had to pitch the guys uh, the second, third, fourth time around the lineup. Right. right. Now you don't see that now because no. it's a power thing. And you would, you would get guys out being, you know, guys that change speeds and stuff. You would get guys out a different way each time through the, through the order. Right. You know, that's one of the things that you don't see now. I would love to see, you know, Koufax versus Marischal, Hummer oh. versus Boddicker versus whoever, you know, Flanagan. Ber- that, I mean, that that brought the people to – you don't have that anymore. No. You don't have the cat and mouse game. Baseball's changed, people. Ross. Oh, no, yeah, yeah r- really. And, and I guess my point when I'm trying – do you think it will ever get back? Because uh, with this power game now, a lot of guys are getting hurt. I mean, they're, they're getting <laughs> to the peak where there's yeah. a lot of uh, – I mean, the arms aren't made to throw this max ever or close to let max me, ever. Let me just jump in for one second. Yeah, go ahead. About 10 days ago, I'm watching a game between the Angels and the White Sox, and Michael Kopak, you know about him, yep. has had a Tommy John surgery, and he's facing a guy named Chris Rodriguez. They weren't the starting pitchers. They were both brought in out of the bullpen in the middle innings. And I've got to tell you, I thought I was watching a game from another planet. It, the, the max effort that both of them used on every pitch, I couldn't see how, how either could survive throwing 170, 190 innings. The, I, it's like watching can't. a different game. They can't. They, they yeah. can't do it. You, you really can't do that. You, you know, um, that's, to be honest with you, Stan, that's the only thing that doesn't hurt on me anymore is my arm. Is your arm. Every, every other part of my body is <laughs> like hell. 
<laughs> but my arm, I, you know, I had back surgery about four months ago, so I could only probably give you about five innings right now. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> what'd you have done a disc or a, was it a neck or back? Lower back. Yeah. Lower I had back. Lumbar. Yeah, a ruptured disc yeah. and, and a pinched nerve in there and stuff like that. But yeah, that's no big deal. I'm going to give you one bit of advice because I've been through the ringer with back surgery and cervical fusion. Go to a running store and buy something called super feet and put it in your sneakers, uh, orthotics. It really helps a lot. Well, I figured, I figured you'd send me some, so uh, I, I can't afford go. to, I can't <laughs> afford to. Hey, we're talking, uh, I've been watching some white Sox baseball lately on the tube. And Steve Stone does their games. He's a great, oh, yeah. does a great job as an analyst. He was talking about a quirky teammate, and he talked about the night that John Lowenstein pretended to be hurt. Oh yeah, were you there that night? Oh yeah, and if yeah, you yeah, were, yeah, was, can you describe <laughs> it? It was great. Well, it was. It was, I it was, was a, at the ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he ran the wall, and he just laid there, and they they ran out there and they brought a stretcher out and carried him in and everybody's just on pins and needles. And all of a sudden he sets up and throws his arms in the air, <laughs> you know, and the place went nuts. Yeah. It just went. Uh, One of the funniest uh, things I've ever seen on a baseball yeah, but th field. Think about, think about how much fun we used to have. Yeah. Oh, they don't have fun anymore. It's a job. It yeah. doesn't it's seem not, like it's it. not no. supposed to be fun. It, it's, it's terrible. <clears throat> yeah, and people can tell. People oh, can tell. Big time. Well, you, you saw the uh, Gary Sheffield. Now, you, people can think what they want about Sheffield, but he made the comment that, uh, I mean, the gate guys are striking out 180, 190 times, 100 times by in April. And <laughs> the game, the game's not, it's just not fun. It's not it's fun, not to, fun watch. to watch. Yeah. I mean, you got three things that are going to happen. And, and now with the rule changes that they're trying to implement, oh. <clears throat> I mean, I'm going, oh my gosh. I mean, they're going, <clears throat> let's move the mound back. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and I wanted to get your opinion on some of those things. Uh, give, me, give me what you think on some of these things. And uh, I, I, I do I do agree, possibly, uh, this double hook thing would leave the pitcher in longer and uh, take out the DH, DH when he comes out. Right. That's the only thing that I think. But I'm just – I. Some of these rules are just absolutely asinine. For me. I, I told, I told, I do some, uh, an, a radio morning radio, uh, here in Kansas city on Wednesdays. And I told the guys, I says, if when they go into extra innings, they start a runner at second base to start the inning, I'm done. I will <laughs> never watch baseball again, ever. This is the big leagues. This isn't softball. This isn't little league ball, T-ball. Seven no. innings too. Seven innings. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to upset you. I don't want to upset you. No, no. It, it's, I, I'm going to take you. I'm going to disagree with you on that rule. I I had the same attitude five years ago when I first read about this. I said this is really terrible. I got to tell you, I find the extra innings of a baseball game now to be much more interesting than why they don't bunt. No, nobody they do, bunts. They do it. They move they're a runner doing, over. They're, stand. they're doing. They're trying to. No, they're not. They're, they're not trying to do anything. Yeah. All they're doing is swinging for the fences, and the guy's still standing at second base, and you <laughs> do it over again. So now don't me, tell me they're trying. That's let garbage. Me ask you, let me ask you about another rule, uh, to rule Ugh. change that is coming down the pike. If you were a pitcher, would you like the electronic eye no. calling balls and strikes? No, why not? No, because. Wouldn't you want the predictability of knowing? No, we... I don't. No. Okay, tell it's me why. It's a human game. It's it's a fun human game. What was the most fun things? Let's watching umpires and and managers argue. Weaver, Bobby Cox, <laughs> yeah. people would go nuts. They loved it. Now what? If all you have to do to manage now is hold up one finger. Okay. Oh, wait a second. I want to check. Uh, 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 okay. Okay. I, I, I want you to review it or. I want the right-hander. Right. That's it. One finger. You can manage with one finger. That's all you have to do. There is no excitement to the game at all. Zero. It's, it's, and no strategy. Very None. Very little strategy. None. No. And, you know, and the, the sad, Stan, you know, one of the things that I, I look at when the most viewers viewed baseball, 
the baseball right. games. It was the 70s and 80s. You got the biggest viewing audience. Why? I'm going, look back, why? I mean, it, it's... Look at the players. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. I know. And it, the game was, I mean, there was, a, there was a beauty and an art to it. Yes. And, and, that, and that, the people, and you talk to people, they miss that. They want to see the cat and mouse game between Catfish Hunter and uh, uh, Thurman Munson. They, well, I they, interrupted before you were asking Mike that, and I interrupted to talk no, about I, Chris Rodriguez. Do you ever think the game can come back to be played the way it was, Mike, or do you think it's if just baseball, inevitable? If baseball wants to survive, Stan, it has to. Okay. It really has to. because How, how would you attempt to, to, to reel it in from where it is now? Are there okay. Rules First thing I do, do is get rid of all the analytic people. <laughs> go, get, 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 get. Put your pocket protectors and go. Okay. <laughs> get rid of that stuff. Let's get rid, back into real baseball. Mm -hmm. You have to understand, I would never have been drafted today, yeah. ever. And I played 14 years. Right. Think about that. There's no possible way Throw being too five slow. foot, yeah. 11 inches, throwing mid to upper 80s. I wouldn't even get looked at. Never. No chance. No right. chance. You have Honestly. to get back to baseball and baseball people and get rid of all the why do we, why do we want to change a great, great game? Why do we have to keep trying to change it? That has survived it, it, that has survived a deck uh, not a century. A century no, with Bruce, no changes, minor Babe, changes. Babe Ruth said best. Baseball is a wonderful game, despite the idiots that run it. <laughs> that Babe Ruth said that. Yep. <clears throat> and that's probably 75, 80 years ago. Yes. So Mike, that tells what kind us, of, Mike, what kind of a, a catcher was Rick Dempsey? For those that really never saw him. Don't make faces, Ross. I'm not. Don't make I'm faces. Not, I'm not. <laughs> Tell the truth. You know, tell, tell the truth. truth. Yeah, I love throwing to Demper. Right. No. I really did. The only the only time I got in trouble with Demper is, is he kept wanting to throw breaking balls because he couldn't hit them. He <laughs> wanted me to throw. Break he thought yeah. nobody else. Could. Yeah. 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 No, Demper was great. <clears throat> he uh, he could throw runners out and 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 he he just he fit perfect with our yep. group. He really did. And I I watch right now. I watch the Oriole catchers and I cannot wait until Adlai Rechman gets to the big leagues. If he's half a good, a defensive catcher. Oh, defensively, much, he'll be fine. How, how much, how much can a really solid mm -hmm. defensive catcher who thinks along with the pitcher, how much can he mean to a good pitcher? It's the most important thing to a pitcher. Yeah. I mean, if you have somebody in sync with you, Throughout the game, it makes it so easy and effortless. If you're fighting with with a guy calling the game or something that bothers you behind the dish, it's frustrating out on the mound. It really is. Now, you're talking about this kid, great defensive catcher. Guess what? Salvador Perez was a great defensive catcher. They didn't think he was going to hit. Right. Guess what? He's, he's turned he into a hits. really solid hitter. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you don't know. You don't know until they get here. Right. And that's why I like seeing the kids come up. I love <clears> watching <throat> the kids. Because you don't know till they get here. Yeah. You you, you watch just, them. He's got some time in to prepare for the major leagues. Defensively, uh, throwing, even maybe calling the game. I think he'll be fine. Hitting, that's another thing. But if he plays defense and catch those and call a game. He's if he can call a game. If he can no. call a game, you know. Yeah. They, they, people don't catchers really don't frame anymore that much, you know, no. they really don't. So, okay. That out of the way, can he call a game? Can he see what a hitter's trying to do? A hitter will tell you what he's trying to do. Right. And you need the catcher to see what the hitter's telling you. And so it goes smoothly. Let me Hopefully they watch the game. Yeah, yes. That's the other well, thing. Well, that's what catch, the catchers do like to watch the game and pay attention. Well, I mean, and not depend on the cards they have or that they're told. I mean, one of the things that drives me nuts is is they play the shift. They have a left-handed hitter up, and they're shifting, 
and they're pitching them away. Way. Yeah. <laughs> they're giving you the air. Hit the ball. If you have any bat handle ability at all, you should hit the ball. And you're seeing, I think you're seeing it more and more now <clears throat> than in the past. Guys are starting to hit the ball the other way because they're giving you the opportunity. Here it is. Hit it that way. Number one, Ross. Number one, you can put all the shifts on you want and do all you want to. If the pitcher doesn't have any command, which they don't, because they're throwing as hard as they can, oh, really? it isn't going to matter. It doesn't matter. No. And they don't. They, I tell you what, if a guy hits one into the teeth of a shift and makes an out, boy, you hear him. Oh, look, you know, they hit it right. The shift was perfect. Yeah. What about the other three times when a ground ball was right to the second baseman and it's for a base hit? Right. Uh, yeah, no, the shift yeah. didn't pan out that time. Yeah, no. You know? It, my you have God. to have command. You have to have command to be able to use a shift. Right. Right. And they don't. Yeah. No. The Orioles have a new pitching coach this year. After two years of Doug Brocal, they've got Chris Hart, Chris Holt, who's been Holt, working yeah. in the organization. He's using a lot of the new metrics and analytics and all that. Uh, but these young pitchers that are coming up have worked with him for a couple of years in the minor leagues. I noticed that Kansas City is bringing in a new pitching coach who hasn't worked with the pitchers in this organization. How tough is that for Dane Johnson to come in there and have to work with an entire new staff that he's probably not familiar with? Well, Dane Johnson just came in. Well, Cal Eldred's our pitching coach. And okay. he his, his mother just passed away. Okay. So he was gone for a little bit. Okay. But uh, – I'm sorry, I got that coach. wrong. I looked it up, and and it said he was the pitching coach. I didn't remember. Yeah, well, that's Cal that's, Eldridge, that's a pitching coach. Yeah, okay. Cal Cal's a pitching coach, and I play with Cal in Milwaukee. He's yep. an Iowa boy like me, um, and we've known each other for a long time. And Cal's done a pretty good job because he was basically when he got called in here, he was a sacrificial lamb, and he took some young pitchers and and <laughs> did pretty darn good job with them, and uh, so. It, it, it's it's tough when you when you start rotating pitching coaches and I've had this I had it in Baltimore I had it in in Kansas City here where all of a sudden there's a different pitching coach and a different pitching coach different philosophies different you know and you now I me mean, I had a guy in Kansas City and I ain't gonna say his name but you know I'd, I'd been pitching for for 11 years and he comes out to the outfield during batting practice says listen I think you should start going from the third base side of the rubber and I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> guy never played a day in the big leagues I don't know okay he played yeah. the minor leagues, right and i looked at him i said get out of my face <laughs> go away <laughs> go away come on oh. did that guy did that guy we don't need his name but did he remain a pitching coach of no big no now? he disappeared no, he quickly <laughs> yeah oh geez no elder elder has done a good job and i can't believe because i looked up that specifically to ask you that and it said dane johnson is joined the kansas city as his first year pitching coach so yeah he just yeah, came that's, in that's as Cal's, Cal's mom passed away that's why okay all right he was gone for a while uh hey, but, but a pit but a pitching coach how much can that mean to a young pitcher like when you were when you came up i know you were a little bit older you were 24 25 i didn't need a pitching coach i had flanagan mcgregor <laughs> McGregor, <and Palmer. laughs> right. <Scotty> McGregor. <laughs> i mean i i was so blessed it was unbelievable and and ray miller was the pitching coach and yep. ray knew he was the go between he right. was a guy that you know when the guys got mad at or you know something was going on he was that buffer between uh weaver and the pitchers you know which right. was it was a he did a perfect job on that. Um, right. And I also had, like Bill Fisher in, in Boston. Bill, basically, we had veteran pitchers. You didn't need to do much. He made yeah. you believe by the time, no matter how bad your stuff was in the bullpen, by the time you got into the dugout, they couldn't hit you. <laughs> which, which was yeah. pretty cool, really. Think really? about that. You know, <laughs> you've had those days in your bullpen going, oh, geez, I can't. Oh, gee, do I really have I, to go I out there. Fastball. I'm, I'm, I suck. I'm who terrible. You, I'm going to get you, are, After working with Palmer, Martinez, McGregor, Flanagan, and Steve Stone, who were your uh, pitching mates in, in Boston in the rotation back then? Was that uh, oil can? Was oil uh, can there? Bruce Hurst, oil can. Yeah, we had, we had some good ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't have to, and we had a veteran bullpen. 
you know, Bob Stanley and Dennis Lamp and Reardon and Lee Smith and, you know, that, that's. How many others you got to have? <laughs> <laughs> really? It, that was, it was amazing. You know, basically, you know, and Roger, we actually went in to meet with Joe Morgan, our manager, a couple times and said, Joe, he says, you know, you'd have a seven to two lead going into the, you know, ninth and, or, or, you know, a, a three run lead going into the ninth and he'd leave you out there to finish the game. And you're going, uh, what, what yo, are you doing? yo, we need these closers down the road. You got to use them. They have egos. You have to get them saves. Take us out. You know, eight. come on. You know, that's great. Oh, geez. Hey, Bud, well, Bud, what about, uh, you got uh, Kansas City. I think they're nine and five. They're, they yep. lost, they lost 100 ball. games the last uh, two years. Well, they didn't, last year they didn't. But the two previous years, they've lost over 100 games. Where are they at in the rebuild? I'm sure that, you know, they're going through that, much like the Orioles. Where are they well, at? Well, you know, it was, it was strange. The, the moves we made this year, I mean, we went out and got Santana mm -hmm. and Ben Attendi. And uh, the kid from uh, center fielder, um, Michael Taylor. I was, yeah. I was surprised because, you know, we're, we're looking at these uh, a core group of young pitchers to come through, and I'm going, why are we going to get these veteran guys? And knowing they brought that, in Mike Miner too. They brought back. Yeah, Mike they brought Miner. in Miner. Yep. And uh, you know, we, we've we've we got Brady Singer, second year kid. I mean, just throws throws the ball pretty good. We, we've got a not a great staff, but, right, it, but it's it's so yeah. it's improving. It's improving. It's though. improving. We got arms in the bullpen, which means absolutely nothing because it varies from day to day. Right. You know, uh, they just get out there and throw as hard as they can, as long as they can, sure. and, and hope they don't kill somebody. Because somebody asked me the other day, "Oh, what about this new contract Salvador Perez got? Do you think it's too much?" I said, "You see him get beat up every day by these guys throwing fifty-six foot." 97 mile hour fastballs ricocheting off his body 18 times a game. No, it's not too much. And hey, one of the guys, one of the guys you must like and admire is Kyle Zimmer. What he's gone through, how much, he, yeah, he, yeah, how he much he's gone through. Yeah. yeah. And he's uh -huh. really looked tremendous. And I understand they're saying it's because he was a starting pitcher and had a real repertoire. He really is tough to hit in those situations he's not just throwing the fastball he really knows how to pitch Z zimmer actually pitches yeah which, which really helps i mean that's that's why he looks so good because yep. he can actually locate some pitches you know for the rest <laughs> he looks of like a pitcher. <laughs> yeah he, he's a, well, he he's was a number pitch. he was a number yeah. one draft pick you know he was and and he did have some injuries and and they tried everything they tried they tried <laughs> lasik surgery they tried everything on this kid trying to get him to the big leagues uh but uh, yeah, he's finally figured it out. But I mean, it took him till he's 29 years old. You know, that's oh gosh, yeah, yeah. He's 29. He's going to be 30. I mean, that's it's not like he's a young kid. That, that's that's the problem. That's the issue. Who's the Kansas City pitcher from about? He hasn't been in the big leagues for about three or four years now. He took him six or seven years, and he was turned into a great relief pitcher, and then he got hurt again. Can't remember his name. He was a very high draft pick at Kansas City. Oh, Stan, I was like, I can barely remember what I had. I for know, lunch. I know. Okay. I can't um, remember what I had for lunch today. Uh, I, I can see his face, but I can't think of his yep. name right now. Oh, God. I know, who you're, I know who you're talking about. I tell you what, the 2014-2015 Royals bullpen was probably the best that I'll probably ever see in my life. And that was Wade Davis and um, and Holland and the, the kid that's retired now. Um, yes, yeah, the Latin real hard that, thrower. Yeah, yeah, real hard thrower. Yeah, he finally figured out that he had to actually throw strikes, right. and then all of a sudden, it was good. Right. <laughs> uh, Darn. But I mean, that, I really got to do that. Having Holland and Davis out there because they're they were command bang right yeah. there, bang right there, bang right there, and you got to the fifth inning, and if you had if you didn't have a lead. You were in trouble. You weren't going to win the ball game. You know, Ross asked you a question about where Kansas City is in the rebuild. The biggest difference, they were sold. I mean, they a new owner has their come new in. owner's great. 
Yeah. And yeah, not to we, knock the previous owner, but this guy's willing to put in some more money and didn't want to wait seven, eight years to do it. This, this, it is a business, but it's not really a business to him. He's kind of old school where yeah. he loves the game and he yeah. hires good people and lets <clears throat> them do their job. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that he has so much success because he deserves it. I mean, he, we, we went through that pandemic and, and other clubs were, weren't paying their minor league kids and, and laying people off. They paid everybody. Yeah. That's Great. good. We hear. did. But then again, we got Pat, Patrick Mahomes is one of the owners. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> we got some deep pockets. There you go. Part of this group. So, yeah. Um, K- Kansas City, you've been out there a long time. Uh, how much respect do you have for the guy who's doing is the architect of this team? And that's Drayton Moore day to day. Dayton's done a great job. And, and I got on Dayton initially when he first came because he was, he talked, talked, talked about, you know, p- pitching is, is the currency of baseball, which is true. It's a currency of baseball. And we went through a long period of time where we just didn't have any pitching. And I kept saying, if pitching is the currency of baseball, <laughs> Where where is it? We, don't where have, any is it? we have to get we got counterfeit yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh I think his hands were just a little tied. Uh, yeah. And finally, uh Mr. Glass opened up the purse strings just a little bit, and all of a sudden, um and we got made the... some he made some good trades. Yeah. Real good trades. And we still and we drafted a few good kids, Hosmer and Mustakas and stuff like that. But overall, uh, he, he he did it. Yeah, and he he worked. He orchestrated this this uh, World Series team in 2015, and yep. and um, it's not easy. It's not easy to do in today's baseball. No, yeah. it is not. If you can, if you can get yourself a World Series in today's market, you're doing really good. Well, Mike, Mike we, uh, let me ask you about uh, no more baseball here. Let's talk about the foundation. Oh, yeah, let's talk, let's talk I, about I, that. I no, want to hear yeah. about that. And and I want to know where my bourbon is. I'll get you one. Don't worry. Uh, we no, got it. <laughs> no, You're covered, Ross. Tell us a little bit about the foundation. I know it's, uh, you know, it has to do with the oncology family of children's uh, mercy hospital. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, it looked like you did a pretty good, uh, you got $81,000. That was yep. amazing, which is yes. really great. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, what it's for, who it's for, uh, and j- just fill us in on the, on, the, on the foundation. Two years ago, for Christmas, my kids came up and says, listen, this is what we want to do for you and mom. We want to start a foundation. And that's your Christmas present. We're going to do the work. We're going to make this work. Where do you want the money to go? And they all know, I, there's nothing that bothers me more than seeing sick kids. Right. I cannot stand it. I would rather take anything they have and put it on me. I hate that. Can't stand to see a kid suffer. And so they pretty much knew. I says, Children's Mercy, because it's a wonderful children's hospital here. It takes care of people and um, they do a wonderful job. So we set this up and we had everything set up last year for we were going to do this and this and, you know, raise some money for Children's Mercy and the pandemic hit. Guess what? You can't, you can't do much, you know, right, right. we had, we had a little sports auction raised about six grand, you know, and they were happy with that. And, and so this year we, we, uh, my, both my sons, Corey and, and James are in the bourbon community, you know, they, they get into this stuff. So let's have a bourbon raffle. And, uh, you know, and yes, sir. Okay. Well, that worked <laughs> booze, you know, and it fits. <laughs> People are into that. <laughs> yep, that's true. So we, we got everything organized, and, and my oldest son, Corey, kind of ran the whole thing, and he's, he's ba- really big into the community. He had a lot of his buddies from the community donate bottles and 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 went around at some liquor stores and, and bought some at cost and stuff like that. And So we ended up having 47 bottles, and, and he had a friend that donated a Pappy Van Winkle, which is, you know, the golden goose of, you know, bourbon i checked them all out i know <laughs> yeah and uh you know jt uh, james t stag and, and different ones and an old rip van winkle and different a lot of what different are those bourbon. what are those valued at mike like are they like thousand uh, dollar bottles the happy van winkle's eighteen hundred dollars wow oh yeah uh, wow yeah the, the other ones are anywhere from seven to nine hundred you know a lot of them so we're we're hoping we're hoping to raise 
15 to 20,000 if we're lucky. <laughs> right. You know, that's what we were trying to do. And, and you got 80,000? Almost 82,000. That's 82, fantastic. yeah. Yeah. That's Unbelievable. really special. Yeah. But it's just, here's the power, power of media. I do that sports radio talk show. So we yep. go in, I go in on a Wednesday and mention it. And next thing you know, we got $11,000 worth of tickets being sold. Go in the following week, take the boys in with a couple bottles, $16,000 worth of tickets. Uh -huh. You know, it, and it just, it blew up from there. It just blew up. So it, we, we raised 82,000, almost 82,000 in two yeah. weeks. How, how, how proud were you when you sort of think back on it, when your kids come to you and say, here's what we want to do for you and mom. Yeah. We want to start a foundation. That is and special kind of kid. Yeah. I have four wonderful kids and my daughters, they were in the, the uh, they did uh, some of the, the Facebook stuff and the computer stuff and, and ran stuff behind the scenes. And my wife was involved getting tickets printed. I mean, it was a whole family affair. Um, but I was very proud. I mean, uh, I've got four great kids. I've been very fortunate. Thank God, because Ross, you know, we're gone all the time. So obviously yeah. it's, it's a reflection of my wife that they're, <laughs> that they're wonderful because, you know, being gone all the time, it's, they, she raises them, you know, that's, that's she true. taught them. Correctly. Yeah, but they've, they've had a lot of years to spend with you now, you know, I, I, I think just, it's a I'm great, just, I think it's a great reflection on you and your wife though. As to your kids yeah, came up with that very, idea. Very proud of them, Stan. Yeah. Very proud. Hey, we really appreciate your taking the time to do this, Mike. Anytime. Uh, if, okay. Anytime. I, I told Ross, I said, keep us informed. Talk. Keep us informed when anything comes up with the foundation that we can yep. help out with. And yep. uh because you know, people can be more have, than we're happy have a little, to, uh, I think we're going to have a little sports uh, memorabilia auction in the fall in September sometime. Well, we'll have uh, you on to talk we'll about it then. Yeah. On the spring, so get get ready, Russ. All right, buddy. Miss Bird says she's here to help too. Oh, I love that woman. Hey, Ross, is it Bird or Bourbon? Bird, 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 Bourbon, Bourbon. How you doing, Bird? Boy, all your all your ex teammates love your wife. <laughs> because they have good taste. They do. They have good they taste. Do. Okay, you can leave now. You can go. You can go. Oh, <laughs> oh I love you, honey. Give kisses to everybody there. Okay. Bye, Bert. Bye. Bye. Hey, Mike. Special we really woman appreciate. Special you're it. married to. She's one of a kind, darling. I love you, honey. <laughs> Bye. She is one of a kind too. Oh, Bird gosh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, thanks again, Mike. We really I appreciate it. For Mike Boddicker, Ross Grimsley, I'm Stan the Fan Charles. Press Box Live has been brought to you by C3 American Exteriors. Go to their website at c3america.com to get a brand new roof for just the cost of your insurance deductible. I know these guys. I like these guys, and I trust these guys. And you won't have a bigger expenditure on your house than the roof, and you got to do it right. C3 American Exteriors. I'll be on uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock with Gary Stein and the new coach of the UMBC Retrievers, that is Jim Ferry, will be our guest. We'll see you then. Thanks. Thanks, bud.